Hey, what is up everybody? It's easy bringing you another Clash of Clans video. This one is on five easy t tips This is the third take. I'm not doing it again. Five easy tips for the new builders base It's been over a week since I've made a video and it, and it shows uh, I suck right now So we're gonna go over the probably the five most important things when you are building your builder base and the top priority is going to be the, the, the laboratory, Star Laboratory. When you first get into your Builder Hall, uh, let's say if you're in Builder Hall 1, going to Builder Hall 2, the very first thing you want to up, upgrade is the laboratory. You, you need to get your troops going right away. Uh, there's a lot of similarities with the Builder Base and, uh, and your regular base. And one of the things that you really want to do is you need to get your troops going before you get your defenses going. Now there is a there's a lot more attention that is being paid to the balancing, so you can't go way ahead on offense and it not hurt you. You're gonna have to upgrade things pretty evenly. But in uh, Builder Hall one to three, your your archers are definitely your strongest troop. Builder Hall four, uh, the baby dragons turn into the strongest troop once you get it. You know you have eight upgrades on the baby dragon in Builder Hall four, but once you get it up close to max, it's the, by far the strongest troop. And then once you get into Builder Hall 5, the, it, you get a shift from the air back down to the ground. At least with the troops we have now. We have more troops coming, but right now, it's going to be the giant in the um, in the cannon cart. Which I'm actually working on the cannon cart right now. So, first thing you have to focus on is that laboratory. Upgrade it right away. The very first thing you do uh, before you bring anything else out. So next thing is just your base building fundamentals uh, One we're gonna go over how you're gonna set up the core and then that the trap placement th those are two huge factors um, This is a very common way that everyone is setting up their core They'll put the builder hall in the middle and then they'll split up the four air defenses the two uh, archer towers and then the, the air balloons or the air bombs and then the firecrackers which is the, the air defenses and you'll just kind of make the cross out of it and this is kind of your basic core setup, and it's it's actually hard. If you're gonna come at it with air, it's hard. So, and then next thing is you have to protect yourself from the ground. So if you're gonna go with that core setup, then you can just put your four cannons, which is actually three can, two cannons, one double cannon, in that crusher, and you just put it in the four corners. And then you notice where the traps are. Those uh, spring traps are all in the core, and th there's a reason for it. We'll get into that a little later. Uh, and now if you look on the outside of the base, I have You know kind of strewn across the outside some of the small bombs and some of those push traps and the, the key to these things are You don't want your spring traps To where the archers are gonna run over them and you don't want your push traps to where uh, The Giants are gonna run over them. You want things specifically for certain troops you want to spring the Giants out of there and you want to you want your uh, your archers to hit those little bombs so put them away from the defenses put them on resources where the Giants won't even come close to all right I'm getting a little ahead of myself but next big thing you have to do and this is a huge 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 can't say it enough how big how important this is watch all the replays that uh, of the attacks in your base and if you see this base, I would never build a base like this in regular clash. I would never build a big giant square. But this type of base is actually pretty effective at the level that I'm at right now. I've tried several different types of bases. The way this base is right here, uh, it's hard for them to pick a good spot to come in. Um, all the walls are pretty much even, so they can pick a spot to come in. They don't know where all the traps are. And again, I have made sure that all of the spring traps are in between defenses, just like you would uh, trying to defend against a hog rider raid, where you know the hogs are going from defense to defense, the giants go from defense to defense. You're gonna try to spring those giants because they can—they're pretty tough on your defenses. So um, put those spring traps next to all, all of your defenses, and then uh, in between all the resource collectors, all the trash buildings, or whatever, that's where you put your little bombs. I, I also try to um, use a giant bomb. And I'm trying to keep it away from the Giants as well because the Giants will soak up that damage and it might wipe out all of the archers or all of the barbarians or whatever else they're using on the ground. Alright, next big step is we know and this is a big complaint for everyone is that you only get to you do three raids a day for, for loot and 
there is a way that you can work this to your advantage and that is to push your trophies while you cannot raid for loot so I've already done my my three raids I've got all the loot I can get for the day I have 24 hours to wait I can either spend gems to boost that up and, and be able to attack again for loot but instead of doing that I'm going to do a bunch of raids and try to push my trophy count up as high as I can get it that way the next time I do raid I will get a lot more for the bonuses on it so I'm also trying different attacks when I'm not actually attacking for loot so that way I'm not um, what you know lower my trophy count while I'm actually go going to earn loot so practice all your attacks while the while the loot counts not there uh, try to push your trophy count up uh, you know a good trophy count uh, what I'm thinking for for most players can be around 2,000 um, you're not dealing with too many elite players at 2,000 trophies and because uh, if you get up to 2,500 trophies, th there are tons of good players there already. Um, never mind up in the 3,000. So we'll try to get those trophies up to around 2,000. That 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 will give you that will almost fill up your your uh, storages um, at Town Hall at Builder Hall Four. Once you get into Builder Hall Five, you know you it's a little harder to fill up with that uh, three raids period. But there, there is something to keep in mind, and, and everyone needs to keep this in mind, because I know that there's, this is, you know, there, if there's one complaint that people have, it's that there was a lot of build-up for the update, and that, uh, you know, there's, it was a little bit of a letdown when people can't do what they normally do, and that is go out and raid and farm, and, and, and just go out and earn as much as they can. There's a lot, people take a lot of pride in how much they can get every day, so having these kind of restrictions... Uh, kind of hurt people's uh, you know their pride a little bit and on top of that you know it made people think that Supercell was just going for the money but what they did actually is they balanced it out and the reason why I say that is because no one can raid you so no one is taking any loot from you everything you get is always a positive gain so you're not losing anything so the, the fact is yes you only can do three raids a day for loot but you're not getting raided and you're not losing any loot so it's always a, a it's always you're always going forward with the loot so push those trophies up get get your trophy count as high as you can handle um, practice all your different types of attacks and don't don't fall in love with one troop I've made that mistake with the baby dragons if you if you're watching all these replays are all baby dragons and then I get into Builder Hall 5 and a lot of these Builder Hall 5s have two air, two firecrackers and they have the hero and all those other things and it was really hard for me to, to keep the trophy count up where it was. I went from 2400 trophies down to 18 just because I wasn't prepared and wasn't using all the troops. So last thing and this is probably the focal point of the whole video is the importance of the clock tower and this goes right back to we're only allowed to loot three times a day so we are limited with the updates that we can do upgrades that we can do so this clock tower as you're upgrading it like right now I, I have mine at 12 minutes so three times a day I, I turn it on and I get a 12 minute boost and it's a times 10 boost so you do the math everything that I have upgrading for that 12 minutes it will end up looking like it had been upgrading for 120 minutes so that's it that's a two hour boost really so every time that you hit the clock tower when it's at level four like mine is you know that's a that's a two hour boost on every single thing that you have building plus your troops are flying and you're able to just go on raid after raid so time all this stuff uh, use all three of them a day I mean this is how you push your base ahead uh, and, and it's you know it's a really important part of the game and I really suggest and urge you to use that clock tower to the best of your ability. So short video. Hope you enjoyed it. First one in a while. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate everyone for watching. And uh, got another one coming up. Probably not tomorrow, but the next day. So until next time, it's been easy. Take care, everybody.